let's go over how to terminate this two conductor shielded cable or really any cable into a captive screw connector. We're going to go over how to prepare the cable and how to actually terminate it into the connector. You're going to need a handful of tools and supplies to do this job. First thing you're going to need obviously is the cable that you need to terminate. You're going to need the captive screw or phoenix connector. You're going to need some heat shrink. I like to use heat shrink that's big enough to cover the exterior of the cable, as well as a little piece of clear heat shrink that's big enough to cover the drain if you have shielded cable. You're going to use a tweaker or a small screwdriver, some people call this a techie, and a pair of snips. In addition, you're going to need a heat gun or another source of heat, maybe a lighter. Some people like to use a lighter or a small butane torch. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our cable. So to do that, you're going to take your snips, and you can use wire strippers if you prefer, but I have been using snips for a long time and I'm comfortable with this method. And you're going to just very lightly score the outside of the cable jacket. You're not going to slice through it, right? It's not cut through. You're not going to slice straight through the cable. You want to just score the outside of the cable and then bend it back and forth until it breaks and then pull the jacket off and throw it away. Now you're going to have on a shielded cable like this one the foil shield inside uh, may or may not come off with the jacket. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Depends how deeply you score it and depends on the cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the end of the foil wrap. We're going to open it up just a little bit just so that we can find an edge. And we're going to take our snips and just put a very small nick in one corner of it, being very careful not to nick the cables themselves, or the conductors themselves, rather. And then you just pull the rest of the foil shield off, starting with that little cut that you cut into it. Next, we're going to apply some heat shrink. So you're going to take the smaller heat shrink, the part that's to cover the drain, and you're going to cut it roughly to the size that you want. So I'm going to say about that much for me, for this application. And this is not a final cut. You can always adjust this after the fact, before you apply the heat shrink. If you've cut it too long, you can always pull it back off and trim it down to size. So I think this is probably a good size for me. Now I'm going to take my larger heat shrink. I'm going to cut about uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch off. And this is going to go around the entire cable. This is going to cover the jacket. This is going to cover the interior insulation. The reason we're using this heat shrink is pretty much purely cosmetic. That foil is exposed there. It's kind of ugly. We put this on there. It'll look kind of pretty. So now you're going to take your heat gun and... Wait for it to warm up and heat up your heat shrink. Alright. Now that's done, we can prepare the cable further. We're going to take these individual conductors that are insulated and we're going to strip the insulation off just like we did with the exterior insulation, the jacket of the cable. You're just going to lightly score it and then you can pull it off. You don't want to cut too deeply when you're scoring it. You want to be really careful and conservative because you can always go over it again to make the score deeper. But once you nick the internal conductors and you break the wire, you can't undo that. You want to make sure that when you insert your conductors into your Phoenix terminal block that there's no bare wire sticking out the back of it to prevent any shorts from happening. So what you're going to do is you're going to arrange your wires, your conductors, in the order that they need to go. In my case I'm going to do bare red black. This is for an RS-232 connection. And you're just going to put them inside the Phoenix connector. One thing to watch out for is to make sure that the Phoenix connector is open and that you have somewhere to put the wire when you stick it inside there because some connectors 
if they're closed, it can be kind of hard to tell that this one's closed and this one's open just kind of by a quick look at it, especially if your lighting's not that great. So it doesn't hurt to just stick your tweaker in there and open these screws. So if you don't know already, these captive screw connectors work by putting a tweaker into a screw and then turning it. You tighten the screw and it closes that connector. And you loosen that screw and it opens that connector. So this is basically just a little grabber for the wires. So now you've got your conductors in, each in their own slot, right? You don't have any stray strands touching each other. You don't have anything uh, shorting out behind. And you're just going to tighten these down until they're nice and snug. And then give them a little extra love after you feel like they're snug. There you go. Now you'll notice that we didn't tin these wires before connecting them to the Phoenix brick. That's because you're not supposed to tin your wires when you connect them to a Phoenix connector. The way a Phoenix connector works is by taking advantage of the stranded nature of the wire to smush it down. So as the door closes, it smushes the wire flat and spreads it out. And that creates a really tight mechanical and electrical connection. Now if you tin the ends of the wire with solder, they become stiff and they become like one solid piece of wire and you don't get that nice smushing motion when you close the phoenix connector because it's hitting a solid object instead of a bunch of strands that can be kind of smooshed together so you end up with a less secure mechanical and electrical connection i've seen instances where you have this weird intermittent audio issue where the microphone cuts in and out and it's kind of funny and you go and you look at the termination and somebody had tinned the ends of the wire so that's something to watch out for. Do not tin the ends of the wire. It's not the proper way to do this termination. It's not the way this connector is intended to be used.